a research team near the coast, heading north-northwest. Forty-five kilometers off the sandy beaches of Bochum, one of the most exciting tests in German science is taking place. At the Alpha Ventus Wind Farm, scientists commissioned by the German government are finding out if electricity can be economically produced in the middle of the North Sea. Reliability is one important factor. Repair work out here is laborious and expensive. That's why more than 150 scientists are researching offshore technology in 25 separate projects during both the construction and operational phase. Their results could provide a breakthrough for technology that fundamentally changes the way Germany is supplied with electricity. Spring 2008. Even before the construction of the offshore farm begins, engineers are testing a model of the tripod foundation in the large wave flume at Hanover University. The real thing will have to support a wind turbine weighing more than 500 tons on a sandy seabed for many years to come. To prevent the turbines from obstructing views from the beaches of Bochum, or from spoiling the landscape of the Wattenmeer National Park, they have to be located far out to sea. And that's where the waves are especially high. A wave machine simulates the energy. The waves are especially strong when they break on the tripod. The scientists measure the water's force with special sensors. They use the measurement data to optimize mathematical models that provide information about the forces bearing down on offshore parks. We've determined through measurements in the flumes that breaking waves create 17 times more force than waves of similar height that do not break. That means several times a year, waves crash against the steel foundation with a force of more than 500 tons. The real tripods that will support the turbines are assembled in Verdal, Norway. Each foundation weighs more than 700 tons. The walls are several centimeters thick. The problem is, while the giant tripods have to withstand the enormous forces out at sea, they can't be too big. Every millimeter of steel cladding raises the cost by thousands of euros, making offshore electricity less economical. That's why two engineers from the Fraunhofer Ives install a special sensor in the tripod. The sensor measures the mechanical changes of the steel colossus in response to wide temperature fluctuations strong pounding of the waves and extreme wind speeds. A test turbine is provided with hundreds of sensors, including additional accelerator sensors to monitor the entire structure over a period of several years. The tripod is not only a foundation, but also an important measuring device. It's part of a mechanical monitoring program to help engineers design an optimal tripod structure. In April 2009, it goes out to sea. In addition to sensors, the feet of the tripod are provided with a special ring structure. Before it goes into operation, engineers have to anchor the several-ton colossus 30 meters deep into the seabed. And they have to find the exact position down to the centimeter.
they made it. Afterwards, they anchor the steel foundation to the seabed with three piles measuring more than 30 meters in length. Before the piles are driven into the seafloor, pressurized air flows into the rings. And a veil of bubbles rises toward the surface of the water. The bubbles are intended to dampen the noise made by this hammer. It pounds the piles with a force of 50 tons, once every second for 10 hours. The veil of bubbles absorbs the sound waves, forming part of an ecological research program. The surrounding area is much quieter, The region where the work is taking place is home to porpoises. The sea mammals are sensitive to loud noises and shouldn't be disturbed by the construction clatter. The foundations aren't the only object of research. Fraunhofer scientists also put entire rotor blades through an extreme testing process. First, Technicians in Bremerhaven screw a so-called rotor blade clamp onto an approximately 40 meter long rotor blade. They also provide the component with sensors designed to monitor the forces working on the blade during the test. The cables are taped to the plate surface. Now it's ready for the rotor blade testing station. Hydraulic cylinders are attached to the rotor blade clamp in a hall some 80 meters long and 20 meters high. Seventy-two thread bolts provide a solid hold on the six-ton rotor blade. The bolts are anchored to a 700-ton mounting block. The engineers tighten the nuts with a hydraulic wrench. In this test, we oscillate the blades in both directions at the same time using an eigenfrequency to simulate what loads the offshore units can endure during 20 years in operation. While the last rotations are carried out by hand, engineer Falco Birkna inspects the 40-meter rotor blade. Hi, Stefan. Everything looks good here. Let's start the test. Before giant rotor blades like these can be mounted on a wind turbine, they have to undergo fatigue tests that demonstrate they've been constructed using the latest technology. The hydraulic cylinders pull on the blade with a force of nearly one ton. The testing hall in Bremen is one of the world's only facilities where the blade is loaded simultaneously in two directions. Since this takes place at the exact same frequency at which the blade would oscillate on its own, extreme amplitudes are reached. That way, the test facility simulates 20 years of wind loads in just under three months. Measurement data from more than 200 sensors are compared with theoretical data. If the data sets concur, the engineers consider the blade a flawless construction. We've determined no mechanical changes in the blade structure that assures us the blade can withstand extreme conditions at sea. On November 16, 2009, the last rotor is installed at the offshore wind farm. All 12 Alpha Ventus wind turbines are ready for operation. 
and they've been delivering power to the network since the spring of 2010. Power for more than 50,000 households. Through rain and shine, day and night. More than 1,200 sensors are distributed over two facilities. They provide information about nearly every movement of the individual components. And they provide the scientists with important knowledge that will help engineers further optimize the construction and economic efficiency of offshore technology. But there's still a lot of research to do in the expanses stretching over the North Sea. Aerodynamically, the zone where wind energy is produced remains uncharted territory. We know exactly what kind of turbulence a jet experiences at 10,000 meters above the Atlantic, but no one can describe the turbulence 100 to 200 meters above the North Sea with any accuracy. And it's exactly this knowledge that is essential for building even larger and more efficient turbines. That's why scientists install a special laser system known as LIDAR onto one of the wind power units. Working out here is risky business. It's a job for specially trained professionals. The laser measures turbulence on both sides of a turbine, front and back. The laser is installed right behind the rotor blade. Several units shoot the laser rays into the surrounding areas at the speed of light. The rays possess a very specific wavelength. The laser rays strike these tiny particles called aerosols, which then reflect the rays. That changes the wavelength. Sensors communicate the difference between the wavelengths of incoming and outgoing light. And that allows the system to precisely measure the wind speed on both sides of the unit to the tenth of a second. The measurement data is evaluated at the University of Stuttgart. Here we have the first measurement data from our nacelle-based LiDAR measuring system. And the first results look very good. That means the measuring system we developed here is working. For the first time, we can now interpolate the entire wind field. In other words, we can use the points of measurement to interpolate the areas in between. Special computer programs visualize various wind speeds behind the wind power plant. Green stands for low and red for high wind speeds. The stark differences behind the plant are easily recognized, and that means heavy turbulence. For the first time, Stuttgart scientists can compare this data with a mathematical model based on purely theoretical calculations. The result is a much higher resolution and more precise data. The scientists visualize their research results on a 3D screen. The model on the right is based on real measured data. The one on the left is based on theoretical and mathematical data. Through this comparison, the theoretical and more detailed model can be further optimized. As a result, engineers receive guidance for the construction of lighter rotor blades and the optimal positioning of wind turbines on an offshore farm. Researching the construction of foundations, towers and rotor blades, recognizing ecological balances, 
and investigating aerodynamic environments. The RAVE research program at Alpha Ventus delivers important knowledge for a vision of the future. A future where large and powerful offshore wind farms soon deliver a substantial portion of the electricity that used to be provided by nuclear power plants, fundamentally changing Germany's power supply.